I'm Jo from Blooms at Borrowdale. I have a florist in Hartley Clay and I've been invited to come here today to Green Futures to show you how to make a table arrangement. Um, it's an autumn table arrangement. We've got lots of lovely uh, foraged items out the gardens here. Um, all sorts of seed heads, evergreen foliages, berries, cones, all to make this arrangement with. There's a few sundry items as well that we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to be using some floral foam. Uh, we've got a little dish as well, just a basic plastic dish, which um, you can buy from either florist shops or you, uh, you might be able to get them from the range um, or places, anywhere where they sell Oasis products, the garden, some garden centres as well. Uh, we've got some pot tape, what we class as called pot tape. It's a really strong sticky tape that's got a cloth uh, backing, which makes it really strong, like a cotton backing, um, which I'm gonna show you how to use that. You're gonna need a bowl of water or a sink of water. Um, we've got some stub wires. Uh, these are long green plastic coated wires. Uh, scissors, knives uh, to create this design. So the first thing I wanted to explain is to how to soak the floral foam properly. So floral foam comes in a brick and there's three quarters in a brick. So I've cut one third off, okay? So it's a third of a brick of foam. And I'm just gonna show you how to soak that properly. When you're soaking floral foam, it's really important to have enough depth of water that will take the full depth of the floral foam, okay? And then just sit your floral foam on the top. That's all you need to do, nothing else, and it will take its own weight down. Um, so it has been known for some people to plunge, so to make it soak quicker, but what that does is, it, it creates the water going over the top, round the sides and over the top. It doesn't soak through the center. When you then start to use the floral foam and you're pushing the stems into the floral foam, the center will be dry. And so the plant material won't be anchored properly and it will also die away because there's no water in there. So it takes a minute or two just to take itself down, but it's really important to give it the time it needs to be able to do that. Once your floral foam is soaked, it's, it sits just under, if you just give it a little push, it will just sit under the water line of the water and it, it, you could leave it there quite happily and it would just bob around just there. If you're using a kitchen sink and you're working a little bit away from the sink, it's always best to take a good container to the sink because the floral foam will drip quite a lot. So you will end up with a lot of water on the floor. So always take your container to the sink or the bowl or to save on the water loss. So that fits in almost. We're just gonna to have to trim a little bit off the side. So taking a sharp knife, a craft knife or a kitchen knife uh, is, is absolutely fine to use. We're just gonna cut through the foam. Just as a caution for health and safety, it's always best to cut your floral foam after it's been soaked. It's very dry, very dusty, and it's not good for people with bad chests or asthmatics uh, or allergies. So it's always best to soak your floral foam. That really does stop any dust. And I'm just gonna, as well as taking a piece off the side, it's actually quite deep. So I'm just gonna take a little bit off the bottom as well. Just a little bit. We don't need it as high as that. Okay. And then we can sit that into the container and just give it a little push and just settle it onto there. The next thing we're gonna do is to chamfer the foam edges. It's really important to do that. At the moment, we've got all the, the sides and the top to use. By just taking off that edge, that sharp edge with your knife, all the way around, what you end up with is an extra surface area to work your stems into. So as rather than just being the sides and the top, you've now got this extra place here to put your stems in. I'm also gonna take off these corners. Again, we've ended up with another place in which to be able to put some stems. You can't physically really put a stem. It's a lot harder to work a stem into a sharp 
right angled corner. So just by taking off those, it just gives you these extra places to put your floral foam, to put your stems. So once you've got your foam cut and shaped, it's really important to make sure that your work surface is nice and dry. So we don't want any water on there at all, just while we tape the foam in. Obviously without the tape, the foam can just come straight out the container and all your flowers and your arrangement will come with it. So it's really important to, to tape it in. So this is the pot tape. Again, with that cloth weave to the back makes it really strong. But you do need to use it uh, on a very dry surface. And the other thing to check is that the underneath of your container is also very dry. So take off as much from the reel as you need to be able to go over the surface of the floral foam and right underneath and cross over. So if you imagine that and then cut accordingly, Put your thumbs at either end, place it over slightly off centre, over the floral foam. You can see my thumbs are pushing down and keeping that quite taut. Take it over the rim of the container and use your thumbs and then lift it up and then just tuck the rest of the pot tape in. It needs to be really tight. We do need to do that twice. So a little bit of a measure up again. Cut off what you think you need. Thumbs at either end. Push down with your thumbs onto the side of your container and then take the pot tape underneath. We always say that you should be able to do what Mary Berry does with a meringue and lift it on top of your head, but don't do that because you'll get wet. <laughs> but you should be able to lift it upside down and I'll just show you in the bowl of water, it, you shouldn't have any movement. It should be really secure. It's a really important part of the starting blocks of getting anything arranged is your mechanics. Soaking your foam properly and preparing your mechanics, really important starting place. Uh, so now we get the good bit of putting all the materials in. So I'm gonna show you a way of getting started. We've got lots of different greeneries here. Conifer is ideal. It's readily available. Most people can get hold of conifer. It's got a lovely texture. Um, there's all different shades and we've got some lovely conifer here with some berries on somewhere. Can't find any. Some of them have these little cones on which are really nice. We've got holly, we've got some variegated privet, we've got some berries, we've got some dried lavender, rose hips, teasels, and we've also got some pine cones. But the conifer is a really good base in which to start. So what we're going to do is create a round table arrangement in this round dish. And I'm going to show you the placements of the flowers in there. So you want to cut your foliage so that you're overhanging the dish by about two inches and then cut a piece so that by the time you've placed it into the floral foam, it will be a couple of inches. Once you've cut it to size, trim off all of the bottom foliage. You need a really nice clean stem. If you're working with anything with thorns, you need to remove the thorns. But you, but you need a really nice clean stem. Anything going in the floral foam should just be stem, no foliage of any kind. And we're also going to cut the material at a 45 degree angle. So we're not cutting straight across, we're cutting at a 45 degree angle. And what that does is it opens up the surface area of the stem. So you've got much more uh, surface area to take up moisture once it actually gets inside the foam. And we're going to work like a a clock face. So if you make sure that the long side of the floral foam is going across the table and you want to be looking at, this, at the, the, the face of a clock. So if you imagine 12 o'clock is in front of you here, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock 
and nine o'clock. Okay, that's what we need to be looking at. So we're gonna go six o'clock for the first one and we're gonna push that into the floral foam a couple of centimeters at the very most. But it's important when you push it in that you angle it up so that eventually as it goes into the foam, the foliage hangs down over the edge of the container. This container is purely to hold the floral foam and any moisture that gathers in the bottom. It's not supposed to be seen. It's a non-decorative container. So by the time we've finished, you won't be able to see that container at all. So it's important to put your stems in at, at a nice angle. And the easiest way to do it, if you've not done it before, is to place your stem on the rim of the container and just point it upwards, okay? And just place it in nice and securely, okay? The other thing to mention, if you decide that something's in the wrong place, if you're gonna take a piece of foliage out, make sure that when you put it back in, you either put it, you can use the same hole so long as it goes deeper. And it needs to be deeper so that it goes into fresh floral foam. If you were to put a piece of foliage in and leave it in the hole it was in, then the air has got in there and the plant material won't be secure and it won't be able to take up water because it's surrounded by air. So you either take it out and put it in in a different place or take it out and put it in the same hole, but deeper than it was originally. Okay, so let's go into there and push that in a bit deeper. Okay, so that's six o'clock gone into there. So we need a piece of the same size as that one. Again, trim everything off the bottom so that you've got a nice clean stem and then just trim that with a 45 degree angle. So we're looking at 22 the hour now, okay? So we're going at 22 the hour, push that in. And we're going with the next one, 20 past the hour. Okay, so we've got six o'clock, 20 past 22. And then the next piece, again, all the same size initially, cut that at a 45 degree angle. And now we're going at 10 past the hour. And this last one, is 10 to the hour. Okay, so there's your five initial pieces in position, just to get us started. The reason you don't use a four is because a four makes it look quite square. So if you imagine that as a four, it does end up quite squared looking. By doing it as a five, it links together much better as a, as a nice round. So it's always wor worth working in odd numbers. Okay, the next piece to put in is a piece for the height. Okay, so you don't need it to be too particularly tall. What we're looking for is a quite a low dome. We don't want a big fat Christmas pudding. We just want a nice low dome. So you don't actually need it to be particularly high in the center. So maybe an inch and a half, two inches maybe. And right in the center there, just put a piece, of, a piece of foliage just to give you an indication of where you want to be with your height. But a couple of inches, I would say, is enough for there. There, the initial pieces that you need to get in, really important for those six pieces. Five around the outside, and then you've got your one in the center, which is gonna act as your height. And what we're gonna do is use these as markers, so everything now will stay within those boundaries that we've set and I'll show you piece by piece how we fill in the gaps. I'm gonna continue with the conifer because you really need a nice overall um, coverage with the same foliage. It just makes life a lot easier um, and it looks more uniform if you do it that way. So the next piece I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up into the center and I'm just gonna work down 
from this into that chamfered edge that we did earlier. So taking off all of the foliage lower, so just working into that chamfered edge. So that you start to bring the foliage from the base to the centre, to the middle and then up into the centre. So you're staggering your foliages through really. And then the last one. Okay, just into there. So we're starting to build up a rounded shape. So we can come into the middle now and start to link more into the centre. So there will be big gaps into this, but that's perfectly fine and perfectly normal. So just bringing in some more foliage all the way around. So you can see from this piece of conifer that I'm actually getting quite a lot of stems just from one piece of conifer. So just working around that centre point. So you've got good gaps in between, that's perfectly fine, but we're starting to build up a nice shape. So I'll just get a little bit more conifer. And then we can start to work in between the initial pieces that we set, just coming up slightly higher just working in between. So making sure that everything that's going into the floral foam is just a stem and it keeps the floral foam in, in good condition because it can break up and start to, to break up if um, you're constantly pulling in and pushing out. It's also advisable not to use as too thicker stems as well because they make big holes and if you make a mistake and start taking them out, it can leave a big hole and it's very difficult to, uh, to fill that again and, not, and to stop the air getting in. So I'm working now on these corners that we did earlier. So just placing some material into those corner pieces. You don't have to do it in this, in this particular order. It's just working around the arrangement. That's got a, quite a weak stem, so I'm gonna to have to swap that piece for something with a little bit more strength. So if you get anything like that that buckles, it's worthwhile changing it for a new piece. Because I'm going to go in deeper, I can use the same hole because I never got far enough to push it into the foam properly before. Okay, so it's just working around. just filling in around and staying within those mark, initial markers that we set. As you come towards the top, your pieces will be shorter. As you go down towards the bottom, your pieces will be longer. So just working around, just working around that tape as well, which also has a habit of getting in the way a little bit but it is necessary to have it. So just placing everything around. And I'll just give it a, a fairly good coverage initially. 
So we've got, if you look at it, bob down onto the table as well. When you're working from above all the time, you can't always see the view. You, especially when you're making a table arrangement, it's really important to actually sit on a chair and look at your arrangement from the seated position so that you can actually see what it's going to look like when people are actually sat at the table. When you look from above all the time and because you're working on top of it, you don't always see gaps at the sides and in the, in the, in the, within the arrangement at the side areas. So every now and again, sit down or, or crouch down and just have a look at it from a seated position so that you can see. But we've got a nice low dome, it's not too high. And the other way to have a look is to pop it on the floor and just look from above. And when you look from above, you can see the shape. You'll see if you've got one in that's too long and that's distorting the shape slightly. You can also see areas that you've missed easier because it's lower, it's further away from you and you can see the shape better. So also looking from above is a really good way of checking your shape. And I can see from doing that, that I've got a piece here that I just need to bring out. Okay, so just to fill that gap that we had, that we've seen from looking from above, it really does make a huge difference for you to be able to see those missing pieces. I'm just gonna put another piece in and then that'll just plug that gap. You can see now that that's a lot better shape around that bottom edge. Okay, now that we've got a really nice coverage of the conifer, and I know there's lots and lots of gaps, but we can see the full shape of the design now. We can see how high it is. We've got foliage all over. We've also got the width. And we're gonna try and keep everything within that. And then we'll finish off with a little bit of um, maybe the lavender or um, something delicate that you can just use and slightly come out of the shape, but we'll get to that. So now that we've got a nice coverage, I'm just gonna use a little bit of this variegated privet. And this will uh, just contrast really nicely with the foliage of the conifer. The texture of the conifer is very uh, coarse, uh, very small leaves, uh, very textured. The leaves on the privet are very flat, very smooth, and also a much brighter colour. Uh, and because of that, they contrast really nicely. So it's important to use at least two, if not three, contrasting materials. Two is fine if you haven't got a lot to hand. Same thing, make sure you've got a nice clean stem going into the foam and a nice 45 degree angle cut on the end. And then just work in your privet in and amongst your conifer. Okay. So just taking it in all areas down to the base. Now the variegated foliage is much more dominant and stands out a lot more than the conifer because it's brighter. So it's really important to get it evenly, as evenly spaced as possible. So we're gonna take some down, we're gonna bring in some up into the top as well. So stripping off any lower leaves. We'll take some over this side. We can take a small piece to the top go into there so you you're bringing that color all over the arrangement take some into here and you can see now that we've got a few pieces in that it really does stand out really brightly against that dark conifer so we've definitely got a bit missing from this corner so we need to rectify that and again if you need to uh, pop it onto the floor and have a look from above. Okay, this piece I've put in is a little bit too short for that place, so I'm going to take that out. I'm going to swap it for a, a longer piece. I've prepared the end and it's going to go in deeper, so I'm going to use the same hole and it'll just sit better. Yeah, that's much better. 
And then this piece that I did have, I can cut a little bit shorter and use over here. Okay, so we've got a fairly even coverage of the variegated foliages as well. It's always best to have a little bit extra of everything so that you can go in and finish off. So we'll start to put some berries in now. These are a little bit fit more fiddly to prepare because you've got to cut away and you do end up with some losing some of the berries this way. But to get that nice stem that we need to go into the foam, you do have to sacrifice some of the berries. And then we'll place those again into the foam and let them hang down onto the table. Get another piece. Cut away any little stubby side shoots, things like this, really important to cut them off. If you imagine that going into the floral foam, it creates a big hole as it pulls through. So trim off anything like that, as flush to the stem as you can get it. Makes a big difference to the life of the foam. So I'm going to take a piece over this way. Again, quite bright, so they stand out. Take a piece to the middle. Just trim that up. Come into the middle section. Nice angle cut on the bottom. We'll come over this way. Okay, so I just need another piece coming to the back. It's a nice piece, lots of berries on that one. Take your time to trim that up and then we can pop that in at the back. Okay, just pop them to one side. Okay, so I'm going to place a little bit more conifer in just to help fill up in the places we need it. Now that we've got some of those bigger berries in. Start to fill in some of these gaps. If you've got a third foliage, then the third foliage could be used at this point. But if you haven't, it doesn't really matter because there's lots of contrast in the rest of the foliages that you've used. So just start to plug some of these bigger gaps. Okay. Take a little bit more berry, just place it into here, and then a little bit to the other side. So you're all the time just checking that things are evenly placed. Okay, so we've got some lovely berry all through there. Probably got, could do with something at the bottom there. So 
So just take that piece, just to give us a little bit of colour on that side. We've got the lavender to place in as well. I'm just going to add a little bit more variegated foliage at the bottom. And into the top as well. Just seeing where those gaps are. I think just a little bit in there. Okay, so it's all starting to come together now. We're getting a nice even coverage of everything that we're using. I think we could probably do with a little bit of the berry Again, keep checking it from above if you need to. Place a little bit of that berry there. Okay. So we've got some poppy seed heads. Just got a couple of those. So they can go in. Just sit them amongst the foliage. Anything um, like this is really nice to use, these poppy seed heads you can collect from the garden. Uh, we've got some of the cones to put in. Again, make it really autumnal. And I'm going to show you how to wire those up. So taking one of the stub wires, which you can get packets of these at garden centres, anywhere where there's an oasis stand, or uh, the florist will help um, supply these at this time of year, no problem at all. So taking a wire and taking your cone, you're going to work in roughly halfway down the wire and place it underneath the scales of the cone. And then just feed the wire in and throughout all of the scales. You might have to use your fingers a little bit for this. Just take your time, feed it round until you meet together. You're looking to have it as equal, as equal at the ends as you can, but don't worry too much. So long as you've got a decent length of, of doubled wire once you've met together, then twist the wires together. Continue to twist all the way along the length of the two wires to create one stem. Okay, pull that nice and straight. And it's important to cut into the twist so you don't end, end up with something like this. You need to avoid this because when you push that into the floral foam, it will make a mess of the foam. So cut down into the twist. So you've got a nice straight stem. And that's basically what you're creating is a stem. There is no natural stem on the cone, so there's nothing to push into the foam. So you need to create that stem by using the wires. And then once you've got it wired, take a little bit more length off there. You can then push it into the foam and it will hold itself in without uh, any worries whatsoever of it falling out. Okay, so that's how to wire a, a cone. And I'm just gonna wire another one. Okay, so once you've checked all round that there's no gaps anywhere, I'm just gonna, we've got a nice gap in the center there and I'm just gonna put it, fill it with a nice piece of teasel. 
Uh, teasels are quite sharp, they have very nasty thorns. The best thing to do is to use your scissors and just scrape away the thorns that are on there, which will enable you to be able to hold it, to use safely. So just take your time just to scrape away. Because they're dry this time of year, they scrape away quite easily and you end up with a much safer stem to use. And then just place that into that position at the top, just to hold everything in place. Okay, so we've got a nice finish there. So with the lavender, I'm just going to take lots of pieces of lavender, Uh, another material you could use for this is uh, corn um, or wheat, which is really nice for the for the autumn. But just allow the lavender just to tuck in amongst everything. But you can come slightly out of the shape just to make it more visible. But also just to eke out a little bit from the formal shape that we've created. Uh, you could use uh, trailing foliages for this or ornamental grasses, really nice. Anything that you can find really. But there's lots of this available. So we're just coming out the shape slightly. just to make it visible. So a little bit all over. It's these finishing off pieces that make a big difference. Take some down as well, so don't just have it at the top. Take some right down to the base. Take some right up to the top. So you're looking for a nice even coverage of everything. As you look over the whole design, it's a nice mix of all, everything all over. You don't want one area with something in it and another area with nothing in it. What a nice piece of everything everywhere. It's a very traditional way of arranging the flowers. Uh, or the foliages or whatever it is you've got to use. And you can see because we've worked a little bit proud of everything else, they really stand out. If you was to tuck them too far in, they would disappear in amongst all the greenery. So just leaving them a little bit longer. It just softens the edges of the design really. But don't neglect the base, it's really important to get that repetition at the bottom as well as everywhere else. Okay, almost there. So we've got a nice foraged arrangement using all natural materials that you can find. Um, just in the hedgerows, in the garden, um, nice mix of foliages, nice variegation in there, different textures, all the different seed edge you can have and um, you're looking really for that nice rounded shape as well. So keep looking at it from above if you need to. Check your middle section by crouching down into that seated position um, but then that will sit on the table.
best way to look after it is to keep it spritzed. So it's going to sit inside. I mean, it could sit on an outdoor table quite nicely this time of year. We still get some quite warm days. But if it's going to stay inside, make sure the floral foam is kept damp, moist. There's a, quite a good tip with that is if you can find a little gap, just sit an ice cube on the top and it will eventually melt and go into the foam. If you're pouring water onto the floral foam, do it with a, do it with a very slow stream because otherwise it will just splash off and run, out, run off. So it needs to be a very gentle stream of water going onto the foam. So the best way is really the, um, the ice cube on top and also mist spraying the foliages just keeps them hydrated and keeps them lasting as long as possible because this time of year central eating's coming on a little bit and it does dry everything out so um, a little mist spray every now and again take it onto the draining board or again you could take it outside and leave it out in the rain if, uh, if it rains let it drip dry off and then put it back onto the table just make sure if you have got a, a really nice table that you've you got it protected and if you need to, you can sit this dish onto a, a more decorative, larger plate so that you've got an even more extended design um, to finish the table with.